Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at the App Profile Manager JavaScript API. So we did a previous video when we where we went through the App Profile Manager and uh, basically, in short, the App Profile Manager is used to define profiles that we can assign to users and uh, each of these profiles can be tailored to um, meet their specific needs and these profiles are basically applied to the customer service workspace app and the omnichannel for customer service uh, D365 app, right? So the agent applications that the agents use, we can, we can basically create profiles that will customize the look and feel for uh, each of these apps, okay? So there's various uh, capabilities that we can, uh, we, we can do to, to customize the experience for the agents. And one of the things as a, as a organization is that when you're building out a custom, a custom experience for your agents, you'll probably get more into using the API, right? So there's gonna be various different situations that come up where maybe configuration doesn't uh, fill in all the boxes for what you're trying to achieve. And then you go ahead and you, you get a developer to go into the API and they start poking around and they start adding more functionality, right? So let's take a look at the, uh, the App Profile Manager API. And you can see here in this link, this is the uh, Microsoft documentation for the API. And um, what I have up here as well is I have the customer service workspace application that I'm signed into, right? So we're gonna just go through and just try out some of the API stuff. So if we scroll down a little bit here, we say um, we see the App Profile Manager JavaScript API reference includes methods and properties to manage the tabs and sessions in customer service workspace, right? So one of the huge benefits to the CSW application is the multi-session experience, right? So what that means is basically a D365 user can come into the application and they can look at multiple uh, customers at the same time, they can deal with multiple cases at the same time, and it's all based around sessions. So you could have multiple of these sessions open and the agents can just tab between these sessions and they'll be able to uh, deal with uh, cases and customers in a very controlled way. And then they can close down sessions, they can reopen, they can open other sessions, etc. right? So the API allows us to go in and manipulate what's going on so that uh, agents can can go through more powerful experiences. So if we scroll down here, we have we see that it's broken down into, the API is broken down into session management. We have a whole bunch of things we can do with the sessions here. We have tab management if we scroll down, um, and we have context management, okay? So let's go up to the top here again, and we'll start with something simple. The first one here we have is uh, get focused session. Let's click into this one. And we can see here it says returns the session object of the session that is in focus, right? Some pretty simple code. We have a constant that says, uh, that calls this method here. It says get focus session in the uh, Microsoft.APM API. And then we just write that out to the console, okay? So we get the session ID, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and let's see how this code looks. So here I am over on the customer service workspace application just going to go into F12 here for the developer console. And we may see some noise here, but that's okay. I'm just going to clear this out and paste in our code and let's run it. All right. So there's our output. It says session ID dash zero, right? So that's the output of our session, uh, of our session ID from the uh, API that we just pasted in, right? So that's cool. Um, we can get the session ID and we can um, uh, basically we'll know what it is and then we can probably use that in some other API calls, right? Uh, what if we go ahead and do this, right? Let's, let's click on a case here on the left. And so that's going to open up a session, right? So now we've got two sessions and let's go ahead and may as well, uh, let me just clear this. We're going to open up a, a third one here. And so now we have three sessions that are concurrently running, right? And we are actually in the third session here because this is in focus. So if I go here and just paste in this code again and run it, we get session ID three, right? So that, that's the session ID and it's different from the, the first one that we had, obviously. So let's go back over here to the documentation and let's take a look at get all sessions. 
So this one says here, constant get uh, for the session IDs is equal to, and now we're calling the get all sessions here. And then we do a for each and we just dump that out to the console, right? So let's go ahead and copy this and we'll go back over here and clear this out. And let's go and paste this in. And there we have our three sessions there, right? Okay, so that's our three sessions. That one looks good. Let's go back over here and let's go down to get session. And this one says basically, um, you know, get the session. And then once you have the session, then let's go ahead and uh, set the title to a new title. All right, just could be interesting. Let's copy this one. And you may notice that, that when we did the get sessions, there wasn't actually a session dash one, um, which is here in the, in the code. Uh, so I'm just gonna make that a session zero. Well, you know what, let's make it, yeah, let's make it zero. So this is, that's the home one. We're gonna make that new title, all right? So if I click enter, and then it, but then we have in the code there, it says if the session is equal to default, then don't do that, right? So let's go ahead and change this to, uh, so it was the zero, I cut and, cut and pasted it. I'm gonna make it two, all right? So session two, new title, that's gonna be this one here. Let's take a look. And now we see that it changed to new title here. So there it is, the one with the new title, okay? So cool, that works, great. Let's go back over here. Let's try something else out. So we hit, we have create session, we have close. Let's try close. We're gonna just close one of these sessions. And it basically grabs the focus session and then it says, uh, if you can close it, then close it, right? So we'll go back over here. Let's paste it in and run it. And now we get this dialog that appears. It says, close the session. You will lose any unsaved changes and you won't be able to return. We'll click close. And now we are back to the two sessions open, right? So that one works, that looks good. I'm just gonna go and open up another one here and let's try out, uh, and now let's try out the, uh, if we go back over here, we have focus. Focus sounds pretty interesting. So it says it gets the session and then it focuses on it, right? So if we go back over here, let's try uh, the session that we, so we know the home, home one is session zero. So I'm just gonna make that session ID zero. And now it automatically brought us here on the left to session zero, right? So that one's nice. That's a good one. Let's go back here. And we have a uh, request focus. We have some properties. I think create sessions really the next big one. Let's do that. And then it says here, uh, create session and session input, okay? So the session input is a string. It says uh, JSON property to input properties of the session to be created. And then we have some information here regarding these properties and um, creates a basic session. And we have the, uh, we have some JavaScript here and, we, and this, this says creates a basic session. And then this one says creates a session that is not in focus. Okay. So some additional parameters that we can pass to that, right? Um, we have here is focused false, and this one does not include the is focused, right? And what we want to do, let's go back, and that's like basically the main session stuff, right? Uh, if we go down, we got tab management. So tabs, um, we got the, let's say get all tabs, right? So if I go and copy this code, and this code is basically saying get focus session, and then get all the tabs inside a session, right? So I'm gonna go over here and let's pick a, um, I'm gonna pick a tab, a, a session that has multiple tabs. This one has three tabs running. So I'm gonna, gonna X out of this, let's paste it in. And so you can see here, we get the trial home. That's this trial home here. We're printing out also the customer service uh, agent dashboard tab, and then the omnichannel ongoing conversations dashboard as well, right? So that's the third one there. So these three tabs are being printed out uh, programmatically so we can we know we can actually access that through this functionality. So that's a good one. Now let's try out uh, get focus tab, gets the tab uh, that is currently in focus. And let's copy that one, see what that looks like. And then it basically says, uh, get the tab and then refresh it, right? So that's another part of the API here. So we'll probably see this refresh. Let's run it. 
There it goes. It's doing the refresh. That's running as expected. So that's a nice little one if you want to do a refresh as well, right? Um, let's go back. We can get the get the tab itself. Uh, we can create a tab. We can close tabs. Uh, let's try closing the tab, see what that looks like. So this is going to need a tab ID. And we're going to get the tab ID through get focus tab. So that's a pretty easy way to do it. Uh, let's do this. We're going to click here onto the ongoing conversations dashboard tab. And this is the one we'll close. So I'm going to paste in the code here and hit run. And it looks like this one actually can't close. So I'm going to try, let's try this one, see if this one works. Otherwise, what we can do is we can open up another tab and try to run that one. Okay, so it looks like this one can't close either. So an easy way to do this, we're going to go over, let's try this. Let's go over here to our second tab and we're going to click on the customer here. And then the customer is going to open up a separate tab here. So now we have two tabs in this one session. And then once this loads, we're going to try to close it, okay? And you can see here, this tab actually has a little X button here can where we can actually manually close the tab as well, right? So let's try this out, X out of here, run this, and there we go. See, it's disappeared now, right? So that's a closable tab, and that's why we were able to close that one. That makes sense. Now, let's jump back over here, and we have... So we have, you know, these other, the other ones you would expect. We have get tab, we have create tab, uh, focus tab, some other stuff. Let's click on create tab, see what this says. Creates a tab in a focus session and returns the unique ID of the tab. Okay, so that looks pretty simple. Um, and we have here the base, create the basic tab or create a tab passing values to an entity form, right? So that's pretty cool because you can actually, looks like you can create the tab and then actually uh create the uh the entity form here and display it right so so that's pretty cool uh let's go ahead and try this looks like it's it's got an incident in there it's got some stuff let's copy this and see what happens so i'm going to go over here paste it in run this and we get the new tab coming up and then you can see here it's actually creating this task here right uh, displaying it's displaying the task here right so that's that's pretty cool we have the, the parameters that we assign to it and then um, and then it's opening it up and displaying it here right um, so we can we can read this documentation here as well creates an app tab in a focus session and returns the ID right so that's exactly what that's doing now if we go back here uh, if we scroll down we have here context management. The following method allows you to manage the session context in customer service workspace. And let's go ahead and click into this one. And this one says, allows you to set the automation dictionary and enables providers to add, modify, and remove values of slugs. The updated values are then available for invoking macros in the future, right? So if we went ahead and ran this one, basically, if we just take a look at it, it says here, Microsoft APM, get focus session, and then you update the context, right? And in this case, it's the customer name, they're setting it to Contoso. And then basically, you can use that updated value when you're invoking macros in the future. So we'll probably do another uh, video uh, uh, on how slugs work. They're a useful piece of functionality, but that's kind of it in terms of the App Profile Manager JavaScript API. Just a quick walkthrough. Hope you guys enjoyed. So that's it, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, check out my blog at carldesouza.com. Thank you.